Thanks for supporting the Fable and Folly Network. Here's another show we know you'll love. Are you there? I think I'm getting something. Why are you recording? For science. Did you hear that? We're a little off schedule. Maybe it's the aliens. I'm studying electromagnetic phenomena and anomalies. I don't think losing people is scary. I just don't want to do it anymore. Just together with me. Radio check. Who's this? I didn't do it. You never do anything. We should still be secure. Are you safe? The walkies again. Who are you? Comfort. I am not doing it on purpose. You can't bullshit. I am not doing it on purpose. Stop. Stop. Oh, God. I don't like this. I don't like this. What the hell was that? I'm not supposed to know that. We're supposed to be innocent. I feel an ending coming. Oracle, a sci-fi anthology podcast set in the not-so-distant future. Season 2, Transmission, available in bi-monthly episode releases starting July 1st, 2023. Or listen now to Season 1, Iris, wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, Mom. Surprise! I've had a change of heart about returning to New York. But don't worry, nothing disastrous happened. Life isn't all about apocalyptic scenarios, you know? Here's the scoop. I've met someone. Hold your horses. It's not a he. Don't start planning the wedding just yet. It's a she. Her name is Megan. Yes, Mom, I'm still proudly riding the rainbow. Crap, people on the bus are looking at me. Can I give you a ring once I finish work? Fantastic. Love you too, Mom. Don't start picking out baby names. It's been a week since the emotional roller coaster of episode one. Jenna and I are back to normal. Our relationship has thankfully grown stronger. We're out tonight at Keene's Steakhouse in LA, enjoying each other's company. Jenna stands up. I'll be right back. I need to use the restroom. I might not be here when you're back. There's an elegant Meryl Streep lookalike giving me the eye. He's practically throwing her Oscars at me. Oh, sure. She traded her Oscars for a night with you. Dream on. Jenna exits. <laughs> I scan the room and spot someone in the far corner. George O'Neill. George is in his 40s. A charismatic man with a warm smile. He's the co-chairman of our apartment committee. Working closely with Jenna. My eyebrows raise in surprise as I see George flirting with a young, attractive woman who seems to be enjoying the attention. He places a hand on her lower back, which strikes me odd. Jenna mentioned George was married to his high school sweetheart. With my curiosity piqued, I watched intently. What the hell is going on? Jenna and I walk towards her door. I'm telling you, your committee co-chairman kissed the lady on the mouth. It could have been innocent. Innocent? It looked like they were trying to start a forest fire with all that kissing. I don't like what I'm hearing. George's hand was on her butt. Jenna opens her door. We enter. She puts away her keys. And you saw all of that at the restaurant while I used the restroom? Yes. Jenna and I walk to her kitchen. She takes out a Chardonnay bottle and then takes out two glasses. She opens the bottle and pours us some wine. So, was a woman blonde or brunette? 
She was blonde. She had big uh, eyes, and she was in her 20s. Yikes. I take a sip of my wine. What? George is in his late 40s. He's married to his college sweetheart. She's a brunette and a mother to his two kids. So that must mean he was... It means George was cheating on his wife. Damn. Ah, uh, I'm kind of jealous too. Jealous? Of what? George's midlife crisis? <laughs> what? The blonde was super hot. You would have done her too. If you were a lesbian. Just saying. Stop talking, please. Why? Are you afraid I'll reveal your secret crush on George? I can see all the headlines now. Jenna confesses her love for Mary co-chairman in the middle of the restaurant. That should sell newspapers by the millions, right? Jenna shakes her head. She takes my wine glass and puts it in the dishwasher. I've got to say, dinner was incredible. I didn't know you majored in art history. Yeah, it turns out my parents were right about my job prospects. So I figured I'd embrace the starving artist lifestyle. I was impressed by your art knowledge. Yeah, who needs a stable job when you can impress people with fun facts about the Renaissance art? I feel like crying. <laughs> yeah, you're pretty pathetic. You should. Hey, are we still on for going to that piano bar? I want to play you something. Jenna puts away her dried cooking pans. You play? I thought you were taking me out to repay me for buying you dinner. I was in a band. I was the lead writer, too. Think British pop icons. Take that. With me being Gary Barlow. Yeah, I'm going to have to Google that band. Trust me. It's like listening to a bunch of cats yelling. But with better haircuts. I can't wait. You look stunning, by the way. Thank you. I know I do. Cheeky. Jenna smiles. Hey, I wanted to apologize for Stuart's behavior. It's okay. I forgive you. But just to be safe, can you promise me you won't bring back any more ex-husbands out of the woodwork? <laughs> Jenna picks up her kettle and pours in water. She puts the kettle on. She gets out a homemade biscuit from the oven. I just want you to know that nothing is going on between me and Stuart. You don't have to. She starts putting the biscuits on a plate for me. There will never be again. Look, you have history. And I get it if... I mean it. I don't want anything to do with him. He's a dick. I hate him. I'm sure the first time we saw each other, you thought I was a dick too. I was way off base with that. You're special. You're unique. You're... You're talking out of your ass. Damn. You figured it out? <laughs> anyway, I told Stuart where to go. He'll never come back into my life again. Are you sure that's what you want? Jenna takes a second to consider that as she stares at me. Hell yes. You know, Stuart is quite handsome. No more than you. I mean... Jenna panics. I get what you're saying. Don't worry. Let's get to know each other better. And then I'll fill you in on Stuart's past. I'm sure that will be a climactic thrill ride for the senses. Oh, you bet. <laughs> Let's say no more on the matter. Thank you. You're welcome. There's a knock on the door. Jenna and I walk to the door. There's a parcel by the door. Marcy must have picked up my parcel for me. That's a cool name. Yeah, well, it's not like she chose it herself. Is she... She's asexual, and she's way too hot for you. Damn it. <laughs> a woman and a teenager walk towards Jenna and me. Watch this. As she walks past me, the woman glares at me and the teenager spits on my trousers. Dick! 
I hope you don't kiss your mother with that mouth, Jaden. Jaden ignores her. Jenna shakes her head. I bet you're thinking about it. I'm a hit with the ladies, too. You'd be way off base. It's not right. You shouldn't be hated. Ah, uh, what can you do? I'm so sorry. Once again, what can you do? Still, people should treat you with a level of respect. You're a good guy. Yeah, but you told them I wasn't. Did I? You told the whole building that I refused to give $100 for the after-school program. Oh yeah, uh, sorry about that. I've had eggs thrown at my windows, too. Seriously? Yep, for the third day running. We need to deal with this. We have to make people see you're a good guy. Are you sure you want to subject these people to my charm and wit? I'm not so sure about your charm, but your wit seems to be a powerful weapon of mass destruction. It's deadly. Hey, I'll have you know that my wit is like a ninja, swift. Deadly, and always dressed in black. A teenager walks down the hall and glares at me as she walks past. Do you know what? I'm going to knock on every door tomorrow. Why? What would be the point? I want to make a case for why you're a good guy and special to me. Aww, you believe I'm all that. That's cute. Where's the bag for me to puke into? Jenna smacks me in the arm. You know, for someone who's hated by everyone... You're not doing a very good job of being humble. <laughs> I have a plan, and I'm doing it. Look, it won't make a difference. It will, I promise. Let me handle this. Okay. Well, good night. Don't forget to wear a helmet to bed. You know, just in case someone throws a tomato at your window. Oh, don't you worry, Jenna. I always wear a full suit of armor to bed. You know, just in case I have to fight off any angry mobs. Jenna lets herself in. I'm sitting on the couch reading a book. I throw it away as soon as I see her. Do you ever knock? Not since I took up lock picking. It's more efficient, and it makes me feel like a secret agent. So, what's the latest? Has everyone forgiven me? Not exactly. Jenna walks toward the book I threw away. I intercept her by grabbing the book. She smiles. What do you mean, not exactly? Well, let's just say that if forgiveness was a bus, you missed it, and now you have to walk all the way to the after-school program. Uh, translation, please? It means you're still in the doghouse. The only way out is to cough up some dough. Or maybe some cheese. Dogs love cheese. Damn it. Jenna tries to see the book I'm hiding behind my back, but I maneuver past her to hide it. I've developed a workaround to get everyone to like you. Thank God. I was thinking I would have to change my name and move to another country if this charade carried on. I'll tell you if you tell me what you're reading and hiding behind your back. Yeah, that's not happening. Fine. I suggest an idea to everyone. They're willing to forgive and forget if you pay towards the after-school program. You and I know I can't afford the hundred dollars right now. Yeah, and that's why I'm gonna wire you the money so you can pay it. Oh? What? It's just, you're doing an awful lot to help a stranger. Well, maybe I like that stranger. Okay. Jenna walks over to me. She gets close to me. It's intimate. Maybe I can't get that stranger off my mind. Perhaps he travels my mind? Well, that's very flattering, Jenna. But before we get any further, I have to warn you, I have a rare condition called commitment phobia. It's not contagious, but then again, it's highly contagious. Jenna quickly reaches behind my back and grabs the book I'm hiding. She instantly laughs as soon as she sees the title. (laughs) 
You're seriously reading Fifty Shades of Grey? No, I, I wasn't. Yes, you were. <laughs> I, I wasn't. Then explain why you were hiding it behind your back. I, I wasn't. Are, are we done here? You're a dirty man. Hey, at least I'm not a filthy rich man. That would be so much worse. I mean, it's not a bad thing. I might want to put that mindset to good use one day. You're disgusting. You're welcome. Oh, by the way, if you're ever looking for a new hobby, I hear crochet can be quite rewarding. I roll my eyes. <laughs> anyway, I'll wire the money over. Thanks. You dirty bastard. Go! Jenna exits. <laughs> What did you think of the pictures I sent you? Is cute the best you can come up with, Mom? I was expecting a declaration of grandeur like, I believe she might be the eighth wonder of the world. Or, you two are destined to have a love story crazier than a telenovela. Cute is like calling her an average squirrel. Come on, Mom. Let's kick it up a notch. Are you inviting us to the family barbecue next month, or are you secretly plotting to organize an intervention before we arrive? Oh, thank goodness. Why did you pause like that? You got me all worried for a moment. Yeah, I'm just about to jump off this bus. I'll give you a shout during dinner. Love you to the moon and back. I enter Jenna's living room. I've been summoned. I'm here. Jenna appears from the kitchen. You absolute dick. Jenna, you flatter me. But I'm pretty sure that's not my official title. Unless you want to start a petition to make it official. I'd be into that. I'm sorry, but you fucking are. Why? What, what did I do? You forwarded an email from me to the building committee telling them I would pay for the program on your behalf. Okay, so what if I did? In the email I sent, which you forwarded, I also wrote that I sent you the money. I still can't see what I did wrong. Corey, the building committee questioned my ethics. Ah, oh, shit. They think I'm crooked. They're calling me Trump. They want to throw me out of the committee. I could lose my powers. Wow, that's weird. I didn't know you were running for president. Can I be your campaign manager? Corey, I make a massive difference to that committee. I'm the only female on it. If I go, all hell breaks loose. How is that even possible in a modern society. The world isn't evolving. I'm the only one who fights for the residents' rights. I'm the only one with a half-decent soul in the committee. Yeah, sure. I believe that. You say the dandiest things sometimes. It's like listening to a Hallmark card on steroids. <laughs> if I lose my position, I'm sure you'll be evicted the first chance the committee has an opportunity to vote. Ooh, shit. We can't let that happen. You think? What, what can we do about it? I will write you a script, and you'll email it to the committee. And that should do what? It should make this mess go away. What if the committee decided they want to see your emails? You could be subpoenaed. Whoa, Corey, you really know how to turn me on. Nothing gets my heart racing like the thought of being subpoenaed by a bunch of building committee bureaucrats. Okay, then. Write the email. It should be enough to make this Watergate scenario disappear without a storm. Yeah? I'll do anything. Really? You know I will. I wink at Jenna. Please, don't wink at me. Why not? 
Is it because you know that every time I wink, an angel loses its wings? Or is it because you don't want to give me a false hope that we might one day be more than just email buddies? Don't forward my script to the committee, or I swear I'll kill you. Have you got that? Yes, ma'am. Good. So, how's that book coming along? Yeah, I'm walking now. I start walking away. Have they got into the spanking part yet? Please, give me a reason to read it. The front door opens and shuts. <laughs> I open the door for Jenna. She enters, holding a casserole dish. She walks past me and heads toward the living room. She puts down the casserole dish on the kitchen table. I made lasagna. Oh no, Jenna. I'm allergic to lasagna. You are? Yeah, every time I eat it, I turn into a werewolf. Jenna is silent. <laughs> Tough crowd. I'm expecting a thank you here. Yeah, well... We've got a problem. What problem? A George O'Neill problem. <sighs> what does he want now? Have a guess. What's that pendejo up to? He knocked on my door about 30 minutes ago to demand that I confess. George wanted you to confess to what? To the whole gunpowder plot. What else? <sighs> that bastard. What did you say to him? I kept to the script. Good. I told him you were paying me back for taking you to dinner. I bet he was suspicious. Oh, you bet. He looked around my apartment, he looked at the material things, and doubted I had money to spend a hundred dollars in a restaurant. Yeah, well, that's George for you. He thinks anyone who doesn't have a solid gold toilet is poor. This is serious. So, you had to dig deep? How did you convince him you did? I didn't get a chance. Instead, George told me he would run a credit check on me. I really hate that guy. George said if my credit check returned negative, I'd be evicted for lying to him. He also said you'd be fired for lying to the committee. Ah, he's running the check now. Look, relax. We'll win this battle. I doubt that. George looked menacing. He looked like Thanos. The guy is evil. Yeah, well, not more evil than me. Look... Chill out. Have some dinner, and I'll handle George. What will you do? I don't know, but I'll figure it out. I could be made homeless, Jenna. Don't worry, Corey. I'll make sure you have a nice cardboard box to sleep in. I'll even put a bow on it. <laughs> I glared at her. You could always move in with me. Yeah, that's a hell no. Jesus, you're a typical man. Whenever there's a sign of a relationship getting serious, you start to panic. It's in our nature. We're weak beings. No, you don't say. Look, eat dinner, and I'll update you in 20 minutes. Jenna walks off. George answers the door to me. Jenna stands next to George. This is your last chance to play ball, George. You either drop your issues with Corey and me, or I go to your daughter's parent evening and tell your wife you're fucking your kid's babysitter. You have no proof. Oh, really? Because last time I checked, Corey here is a professional butt inspector. He can spot a wandering hand from a mile away. That's right. Wait, what? Tell him what you saw, Corey. I saw you at Keen's Steakhouse with a young blonde in her 20s. You had your hand on her butt! George looks furious. A bit of advice. If you're going to cheat, don't do it on your doorstep. You bastard! Don't worry, George. Corey's just jealous because he can't get any action in his own building. What do you want to do, George? So, what's it going to be, playa? George shuts the door to me. I walk off.
You want to talk to Megan? Yeah, no. Mom, hold your horses. Your words scare people off faster than a cat seeing a cucumber. Remember Uncle Vinny's wig? You couldn't stop laughing. Is David back? How do Beth and Luke survive his antics? My brother's a walking disaster zone. Wrong turns and messes are his specialties. He's a miracle circus hasn't recruited him yet. But hey, life's never dull with him around, right? Mind if I visit Veronica for a week? She and Jeremy have wild adventures lined up. They once tried breaking the karaoke marathon record. I know, right? Can you believe it? And their marshmallow Jenga tower? Insane. Don't worry, I declined their offer. I'll keep it low key this weekend. Hang on, Mom. Two secs. Mom, Megan just finished showering and we're about to debate the best breakfast cereal. Can I call you tomorrow night? All right, love you too. Say hi to Uncle Vinny and David when you see them. Love you. Bye. Jenna enters. I'm in the living room watching Friends on HBO Max. I pause the show. Jenna takes a seat beside me. You'll never guess what George did. Ooh, do tell. He dropped the issue. And not only that, he's gonna write to all the residents of the building. To tell them what? To tell them that you invested a fortune in the after-school program. That translates to you forcing George to do it in my good name. Yep, you're welcome. <laughs> you know what? I'm glad this is over. There's other extraordinary news. George is sitting down as co-chairman of the committee, so I'm getting someone else in. I thought the residents had a right to vote for who they wanted in. They do, but let's just say I have a way with people. I'll make sure the right person gets in. Ah, the Jedi mind tricks. Good call. I realized something, and I put up my hand. And before you say anything, I'm getting a woman to be my co-chair. There are already enough men at the table already. We need a woman's touch. Ah, that sounds good. I shouldn't complain. I'm just glad this whole ordeal's over. Me too. Jin? How about you serenade me with some romantic poetry? You know, something from your vast collection of literary gems? I'll sue you if you mention that again. <laughs> Oh really? I'd love to see you try. Should I pour us some gin? I go to the mini bar. I pick up a bottle of aviation gin. Oh, are we going to a bar? No. You have some. I shake the bottle as Jenna walks over and takes the bottle away from me. Yeah, uh, dude, I'm not wasting quality gin on you. Excuse me? I'm the epitome of gin appreciation. It's my life force. We belong together. Well, consider this an intervention then. You need a break from each other. Oh, I've never thought I'd see the day when my old friend would betray me like this. <laughs> Corey, I'm doing this for your own good. You'll thank me later. She puts the gin away. Oh, you wound me. I thought we were friends. We are friends, Corey. But... That doesn't mean I have to share my gin with you. Friendship has its limits. This is mine. <laughs> You're diabolical. Just practicing my Jedi mind tricks. <laughs> <laughs>
The apartment was voiced by Paranoia and Nelson Zapata Correa. The show was written and directed by Joao Encida. If you enjoyed this episode, we kindly ask that you rate us five stars on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. That Love Podcast is active on Twitter at That Love Pod and on Instagram and Facebook at That Love Podcast. And if you're interested in helping us expand the podcast, please consider becoming a Patreon supporter at patreon.com slash thatlovepodcast. Thank you for your support and we hope you have a wonderful day. The Fable and Folly Network, where fiction producers flourish. Dum Dums and Dice would like to welcome you to the grim darkness of the 41st millennium in The Valentine Heresy, an actual play podcast set in the Genesis adaptation of Warhammer 40,000's Dark Heresy RPG. Newly promoted Inquisitor Lucius Valentine has received visions of the death of the immortal God Emperor. With few options before him, he teams up with hive-bred criminal siblings Lyric and Alto. Together, they must defeat a cabal of shadowy foes to save the Emperor and the Imperium. Can this trio of unlikely heroes survive in a galaxy where there is only war? The Emperor is going to die in a year. My job is to make sure the Emperor doesn't die. Because if the Emperor dies, The Astronomicon goes out. And the only thing keeping the Imperium alive is the fact that we have a very large navy and a very large army and space marines, and they shoot everyone. It's delightful. Praise the Emperor. Thanks for that. But if the Astronomicon goes out, we have no navy, we have no ability to defend ourselves, and the Xenos and Chaos will overrun us instantly because there will be no defense. So every planet will turn out like... Galen's glory? And that would be the best case scenario. Which is why we need to keep the emperor on his throne. I spit in my palm and put my hand out for a handshake. Am I supposed to do something in return? Is this, I'm sorry, I just don't know what this is. Alto's like, yeah, like this. He spits in his hand and puts it out towards you as well. Then I spit in both palms and shake their hands separately. (laughs) We have an inquisitorial band. Warhammer 40,000, The Valentine Heresy, available now.